This is a view of the closed suitcase. It came to our attention in 2021. It was then shared around several Rover Scouts because the content had meaning to several Scouts in the 1950s and 60s. However, when you look at the full contents, it stretches back to the 1900s. In 1909, a troop of Scouts at Princess Street for Glasgow was set up by the Reverend W. W. Beveridge. This little movie is to help illustrate what the suitcase contains. It is a chronological recording of the photographs and the individual items that are in the suitcase so that you can have a feel for the history and the many names of Scouts and Rovers who passed through the troop over the years. This shows the open suitcase, very full and packed with items going back, as I said, to 1909. The first item is from 1909 and is an original scarf, we think, from the original troop. In 1909, there was only one patrol and it had one scarf colour. By the end of 1909, there were four patrols and each had their own colour of scarf. In 1910, a decision was made by the full crew that they should only have one scarf colour. And at that time, they picked the colours red and white for the scarves and continued to use that colour from then on. Once again, from the suitcase, we have a little card that goes back to 1911, saying that a cup was won by the scouts and was bashed about in the scout hut at Devaux Glen in Port Glasgow. Kept in the suitcase from 1912 was the listing of all the donations that the Scouts organisation gave as a gift for Baden Powell on his marriage. The first Port Glasgow Boy Scouts did contribute. This photograph is of the 1913 winners of the Renfrewshire flag. It was in 1912 that the Benmore Shield was first competed for. This was a Scotland-wide competition for Scouts. The Port Glasgow group won the Benmore Shield and then won it 10 times in a row. Also, they won the Greenock and District Cup and kept it for 10 years in a row. And when they decided to have a competition called the Renfrewshire Flag, Port Glasgow won it also for another 10 years in a row. The Green Flag Rally brochure from the suitcase shows that competitions were held in Paisley and this is where the Port Glasgow troop won the Benmore Shield. An early photograph of Willie Whiteford, who was with the Scouts into the 1950s and 60s. After the First World War, camping with the Scouts became the norm every summer. Kilcatton Bay is a favourite of the First Port Glasgow Scouts because of Reverend William Beveridge's camping experience with the Fifth Argyle at Kilcatton Bay. From the suitcase again is a membership and enrolment card of Willie Whiteford, showing his age and the many camps up to 1925 that he went to. Tired Scout after a hike. The whole scout troop went camping and this trip was to Aberfoyle. On the serious side of scouting is this magnificent display of all the scouts in 1921 showing off the cups that they have won that year, including the Benmore Shield and the Greenock and District Cup. We are very fortunate that we have retained in the suitcase the very first logs that the Rover crew kept. This log starts on the 28th of October 1922, almost exactly 100 years ago. It carries on for four years until 1926, and then a new log is started. It is a window into the past and tells us how organised these new Rover Scouts were. Andrew McKechnie was the first Rover leader from 1922 and he lasted until 1945. He was given the Medal of Merit by Baden Powell in 1931. Another fine show of a team that had won the Benmore Shield, the Renfrewshire Flag and the Greenock and District Cup in 1922. It was at this stage that Port Glasgow Scouts decided not to compete anymore 
as they had won the trophy for ten years in a row. The first Rover camp was to Drimmen in 1923, and they went there the next year too. In 1924, the Scouts went to Kilgatton Bay. In the suitcase, we are able to follow what the Scouts were doing from 1924 to 1928. There is a book containing the Court of Honour minutes. The Scouts were very determined and met in their hut in Devall Glen on a Friday night at 9.30 after the regular troop meetings. There were many camps as detailed in Willie Whiteford's log. In the suitcase, there was training material for scouts for first aid. A scout had to be very proficient in signalling, but also in first aid. Arran was one of the 1920s campsites. In 1926, Ochengillen campsite was opened up for the scouts by Ben Powell himself. The outdoor life was in the scouts' minds and they did enjoy themselves in the 1920s. In the suitcase, we find in 1928 the troupe busy with a celebrity concert that was put together by the Rover Scouts. Here they are trying to gain funds for Broadston Hospital because there was no National Health Service and the hospital was being paid for by donations alone. Here is a good photo in 1928 of W.M. Beveridge, the second son of the Reverend Beveridge, who managed the Scouts through the 1920s. He became a minister and went off to Africa as a missionary. In the late 1920s, the Scouts and Rovers used various campsites around Port Glasgow. One of these was Ochenfoyle, and another was at the Duckle Castle, and these are two good photographs of the crew at Duckle. Moving into the 30s, there were camps, and at some of these camps there were other troops, such as the 50th Renfrewshire Troop. Sometimes they got visits from dignitaries, such as the Reverend Peter Lockhart, who was the district commissioner. Another large camp was held at Ochengillen in 1930 that Baden Powell was present at. Small groups also went for treks, as the three scouts here in the 1930s. In the suitcase again, we have the dullest book preserved from the 1930s. It is only dull if you ignore the fact it contains the names and addresses of many scouts spanning decades. Another suitcase remnant is a handwritten service given in 1931 at the Old Duchel. A large number of photographs in the suitcase deal with a single camp. This camp was held at Kandersteg in Switzerland and was for the rover crew. The crew went out by train and boat to meet several thousand other rovers to the first big meetings of rovers in the world. There were at least 23 different countries. The Port Glasgow contingent was of eight rovers and Greenock sent nine rovers. There were scouts from everywhere, Hungary, Austria, Switzerland, India and Siam. In 1933, a welcome home complimentary supper was held for Archie Blue, who had been captured by Chinese pirates in 1931 and kept for 26 weeks in captivity before being released. The Rovers were very much into raising funds for things like Broadstone Hospital, and they had a concert group. This concert group gave concerts everywhere. These were old people homes, or even the town hall, and the audience would give to good causes like the Broadstone Hospital or the poor. The 1930s seemed to be camping focused. It was in the early 30s that Willie Welsh became the scoutmaster and he remained in this role to the 1970s. From the suitcase, there is a programme for the birthday party for the first Port Glasgow Rover crew on its 21st birthday in 1943. Special photograph is that of the orphanage in the 1940s where some of the residents begin Cubs and Scouts and Rovers. 
From the suitcase, you can see that there were several maps being kept to emphasise the focus on hiking. After the war, the scouts got back to camping again in the local area, such as Ochenfoil or across Scotland. A few trophies were won by the scout troop. A special camp seems to have been held at Gorebridge in 1948. The scouters in the group, and actually in Renfrewshire, were being properly trained. A camp was held at Gilwell in 1949 to train the senior scouters in the wood badge. The wood badge is the only badge that a scouter wears in his hat or on his chest and is the management training badge and it's given to scouters on completion of the course. In the suitcase there is a log book for the Gilwell camp in 1949. In the suitcase for 1949 a complimentary note was sent to Skipper Welsh for the first Port Glasgow Scouts 40th birthday. There appeared to be several photographs of the 1949 group with the individual scouts' names. In the suitcase again, we find a book which records the Court of Honours between 1957 to the 1970s. Again, there are lots of names of past scouts. In the suitcase, we have a scouter's berry which we think may have belonged to Willie Welsh, the skipper. This brochure, from 1957, is for Boba Job Week, which was a great tradition in the Scouts. It was a way of getting to know your hometown. In 1957, there was a camp at Kilcatton Bay. The troop was still winning some prizes. In the suitcase, there were three camp blogs for trip to Kilcatton Bay, New Abbey and Rose Harty from 1959 to 1961. From the suitcase, in 1959, there was a great 50th celebration of the forming of the Scouts by Reverend Beveridge, and a Jubilee dinner was held in the Star Hotel in Port Glasgow. From the suitcase, we see the Scouts and the Rovers were competing and challenging themselves. One of the most organised and strenuous was the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme, which the Rovers competed in. Some photographs of the new Abbey site, then at Rose Harty in the north of Scotland. 1962 was a big year for Port Glasgow. It was the celebration of the launching of the Comet, the first steam-driven ship built by John Wood and Henry Bell. A grand parade was held and the first Port Glasgow group paraded its pipe band in the procession. The troop was still competing in the open world and in 1963 three members of the group won the Refresher Rover hike over Ben Lomond. In the suitcase there is another log of camps and this was for Kilcatton Bay in 1963. Hiking is a badge for the rovers and two of the rovers took part in a serious hike of over 30 miles down the Cowell Peninsula in 1963 to obtain their hiking badge. And we have managed to obtain the logs of both hikers and these are kept in the suitcase. The first is by Bill Galt and the second is by John, nicknamed Smudger, Smith. The troop was going strong with most of the older rovers going on to university in Glasgow and Edinburgh. Still, camping and hiking were enjoyed. In the suitcase, we have the logs of five midnight hikes, mostly up to Ochenfoil campsite. Photos of large parades are kept. A camp was held back at Rose Harty in 1966. In 1967, a further camp was held with everyone travelling by bus. The Scouts did compete at Everton for the Beverage Trophy and won it. There was a camp held at Kilcatton Bay in 1969 and then Langham in 1970. Finally, the last item in the suitcase is a newsletter from the Scottish Scouts in 1972. This is the end of our time trip and I hope you will enjoy the exhibition.